Okay, this is another method of solving a system of equations, and this one we do not graph. And the reason that we sometimes solve a system without graphing is because when we're graphing, especially by hand without a graphing tool like a, a graphing calculator or Desmos or something like that, our graphs sometimes do not collide in integer points. In other words, on all the notes that I gave you earlier, the, the, the graphs collided in a corner. They don't always do that. Sometimes they're decimal answers or fractional answers, and that's harder to see on a graph, on a graph grid. So we need other methods, which are algebraic. So this is one of the methods. It's called the substitution method, and it is named for what you actually do. You solve one of the equations for one of the variables, and then you substitute that into the other equation. And I'm, I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay. All right, here's our, and we always start with something kind of easy. We could graph this, I know. But we're going to do an easier equation so that when they get harder, you, you can grasp what to do. All right. So, you want to make sure that when you look at your equations, you think, okay, one of these equations looks easier than the other. Now, in this particular example, it really doesn't matter which one of these equations I write under easy and which one I write under hard. In the future, it will matter. You are going to want to pick one out that one of the variables has a coefficient of one. Now, in this particular instance, they all do. So it doesn't matter. We'll get to some a little bit harder, and you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But so we put x plus y equals 2 here, and x minus y equals 0 there. Now, we're going to solve for one of the variables. It doesn't matter. I always solve for y, so this one I solve for x just so you can see. So we'll move the y over here, and it says that x, we end up with x equals negative y plus 2. Now we're going to take that part. You see how I've got that circled in black. We're going to take that part and we're going to substitute it in over here. Now, let me say this really quickly. I would not, in this particular instance, wanted to have solved for y because if I had over here in this equation, see how I had a negative y? I would have had to remember to distribute a negative sign. And for some students, that's where you make your errors. And so it's best not to substitute behind a negative sign. It's just best not to. Doesn't mean it's impossible. It's definitely possible. It's just that you sometimes make sign errors. So anyway, so negative y plus 2 in for x. So we put that in right here for x, and I put it in parentheses. Minus y equals 0. Now what we have is we have one variable. So that's we're going to have something we can solve for here. So now we're going to group our like terms together. Negative y, negative y is negative 2y plus 2 equals zero, and we're going to solve that like we normally would for y. So we move the two to the right, we end up with negative two y equals negative two, then we divide by negative two, we have y equals one. Now once again, now that we have y equals one, we can then substitute back into this equation, which I did here, to solve for x. So, and we have a negative y, so be very, very careful. You write your negative sign, that's why I'm using parentheses. Then we're substituting 1 in for y. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So my answer is 1, 1. Okay. And I wrote steps out. Place one equation under easy and one under hard. Solve the easy equation for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one. Substitute into the hard equation. That was our second step. Solve the hard equation for the remaining variable. And then substitute back into the easy equation to solve for the last variable. Okay. Now, in this particular instance, we have y equals 2x. You already have one of the variables solved for. So that is our easy equation. And then we can put this one over here. So we have y equals 2x. We don't have to solve for a variable. It's already solved. So we're going to substitute into this one. And for y, we are writing 2x. So x plus 2x is 3x. Divide by 3, we get 4. Then we substitute back in over here. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, you can take these points and substitute back into the equations to make sure that they work. And they do. 4 plus 8 is 12. And then 8 equals 2 times 4. 
That's true too. Okay. Now, the, it's beginning to see which one's the easier equation. Now, x plus y is easier than 2x minus y, so we substitute in. Now, this particular time, I purposefully solved for the variable that's behind the negative sign so you can see me handle that. But you subtract the x out and you have y equals negative x plus 1. We're going to substitute in to this one. Watch out. Okay? 2x minus sign, put in parentheses, negative x plus 1. Distribute that negative sign. That becomes positive x and negative 1. So be very, very careful that you distribute that to both terms. All right, now put like terms together. 3x minus 1 equals negative 2. Add the 1 to both sides. And again, now you see why this one would not work so great with a graph. You end up with x equals negative 1 third. That would be hard to tell from a graph. Okay, so now we substitute back in here. Negative, negative sign. Be very, very careful. Negative x plus 1, so negative sign, put parentheses, put the negative 1 third in, that makes it positive 1 third, and positive 1 third and 1 third is 1 and 1 third, or 4 thirds. This would have been difficult to see where they actually crossed on a graph. All right, again, easy, hard. It's easier to see. Now, for some reason, I must have had a student tell me when I taught this a long time ago to put this here. So. I would have personally, if I'd done this one, put this one easy and that one hard. Now this one, maybe I said this one was easy. Another thing, this one's easy because the, the variables are, two variables are already over here. So sometimes you just don't know exactly what's the best way to go. But anyway, so we put this here, we divide by three, we get x is equal to 2y plus four. All right, we're gonna substitute in for x, 2y plus four, all right, now, See how the two y's cancel out and I have four equals four. When that happens, I have infinitely many solutions. That means when I don't- There's a lot of food left from Wednesday. It has been refrigerated and I gotta get rid of it, so I'm gonna put some plates in there. You guys go buy and take your steps. Okay, you might take sorry home about our interruption. Otherwise, it'll have to throw it away. Okay, but when you end up with something like this, where the variable cancels out, and be sure it's going to cancel out, but when you end up with a true statement, then it's infinitely many. If you end up with a stupid answer here, it's going to be no solution. But this one is infinitely many. Every. In other words, these two end up graphing to be the exact same line. That's what happened there. All right, and here is just another example that someone must have asked me a question about. So... All right, let's look at this one. Easy, hard, here's my y equals 2x plus 1. Be sure to distribute the negative sign. The 2x's cancel out. I end up with positive 1, negative 1, which is 0. Does 0 equal 3 on any planet? No, it doesn't. So we end up with a statement that's stupid looking. 0 equals 3, that's a stupid answer. This is no solution. Thank you.